Oh, we're standing on the street in, a, in some kind of city. There's a lot of people surrounding me. Oh, very good. And I just want you to look at yourself. Are you male or female? And me. How old are you? One to twenty-four. No, oh, very good. Do you feel nice and healthy? Yes, but I feel angry. A little bit angry. What are you wearing? I. I think it's some kind of old military clothes, but. Oh, very good. And uh, do you have anything with you? Do you have any signs or? Yeah, I have a sign in my hand. I knew that. What What does your sign say? Yeah, I have to translate it. It says, we want, we want our rights back. We don't want to stand for this. And how many people are there and where are you, what are you standing in front of? We're walking up a big street and there are thousands of people behind me and in front of me now. Really big protest. And okay. what part of the country or the world are you in? Uh, I think I'm in UK because it, they're talking. British around me. Oh, very good. And uh, and by anything that you look at, can you tell what year it is? Nineteen thirty-six. Oh, very good. And uh, where is this crowd headed? We're, we're heading to the government uh, house. Oh, understood. And, and is we there anyone... tired of them using us uh, almost as slaves. Is there anyone in your immediate area that you know and that is there with you? And there's a lady by my side, I recognize her. I think that is my sister Chandra. Oh, very good. And I want you to ask Sharon, what is the uh, what is this place? What's going on? She'll tell you. Oh, we are in Stockholm, not in England. We're protesting against the social inequality and and all of those things that. We don't, we don't have the power of our own life. And uh, does she recognize you to be Lars and know what you're doing with Hank? Yeah, she's not a head. Oh, very yes. good. And why are, are you being shown this particular place? Because this is exactly what you do now in a different way. You protest against all unfair treatment of humanity. You're trying to open people's eyes to what is important and you have done this lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. Oh, very good. And as where you are now, does it get this bad again in your linear expression as Lars? No, not, not in this way, because it changed all of the way the government treated us. We are not longer slaves to the system. We are breaking free. And that even costs some life. Lives. There were military shooting into the crowd in an earlier rally we had. 
No, oh, very good. And is there anything of particular importance besides the information that she has just given you that you need to have to take with you uh, from this particular session that we do today? She said, uh, I, I show you this just to make you understand that you are on the same path that you have been in many lifetimes and you're still walking that path and you are on the right direction with your contract. Excellent. And tell her you are very appreciative uh, for this opportunity. Yes. And knowing that she's an incredible navigator, I'd like for you to ask her, can she take you please into the year 2020 and beyond in our literary expression now to give us an idea of what uh, the shift and what the planet will be like after? Sure, she, she asked me to step into a car. Oh, very good. We had a few short questions that we had a desire to ask about while we were here. And, uh, and obviously, she already knows, and we're very appreciative. And so, uh, any year beyond 2020, uh, let, she's, the, she's the incredible navigator. Let her take. You will be there in the count of... Well, actually, just let me tell you. Just tell me what she does. I won't even let her. She, she's sitting in the driver's seat on the car, and she, she asked me, Sir, what do you want to go? Where do you want to go? Tell her and, just. And I say, be, Beyond 2020. And no be, problem. Oh, man. Very, very good. And tell her, preferably, beyond the shift. Yeah. Ah, oh, very good. And tell me what happens. We just take off and we just now driving in a total white light. Beautiful. But I'm still sitting in a very comfortable car seat. Strange. Yeah, we are. <laughs> I ask you where you're taking me, whatever you want, she says, and, and I want to go beyond the shift, the trans transition to next level. To 5D Earth, and your linear expression is Lars and is Hank. Yes, I know, she says. Oh, very good, thank you. We are, we are stopping now and we're stepping out in this light. It's a very intensive light, not hurtful in any way, but energetic light. Beautiful. Yeah. And it's almost shifting between white and purple, white and purple, white and purple. Nice. Now we're standing in front of some kind of building. And do you mind to ask her what is the name of the building you're in front of, or what is the place? We are going to the conference room to meet the council. Ah, to a conference room. Excellent. Yeah. And what part of the world are you in, do you know? I don't think I'm on the earth anymore. I don't know. I don't sure. I'm not sure. Okay, very good. I asked her, but she only said that we are there. You wanted to be. Okay. She took me into this big oak double door, and there is a big hall, and there is two stairs going up. One. Uh, one big landing up there and we're going up the stairs and there's a there's a sign conference room so we step in there <laughs> she presents me and there's a lot of people in there uh, looking at me and 
It seems like they were waiting for me. Very good. And what do the people look like? They very different kind of entities. There are, they are some extraterrestrials, there are humans, there are... It looked like a bird. Uh, An avian, some, huh? Maybe, and some all, all, almost looked like a cat in the face with... Yeah. Beautiful. Oh, she's really beautiful. How many? Are there there? I think there must be at least fifty or more. Oh, very good. And you said they were waiting for you. So, is there a place for you to? Yes, that, there's a seat reserved for me in the end of a long oval table with a big glass surface. Excellent. There is built-in uh, screen into that surface. It's not built-in. It's just project on the glass. We've you been like to this it. place before, haven't we? I have seen this table before, yes. Yeah. It's just like we communicate. Because we talk so many different languages, we communicate by telepathic, so we can understand each other. We also talk about different issues and that that is showing up on the screen in front of us. So we are able to perceive what the others are talking about. Because we haven't been all over the universe, all of us, everywhere, so to speak. So we have to have some reference points to understand it. Understood. Is Hank in there at on at this uh this gathering? Yeah, you're sitting waving at me. I'm sitting yeah. where? You're sitting on the side and you're waving at me. Oh, you okay. Are, you're Curious. looking exactly the same as now. Okay. But you're shiny, you're really beaming out energy and light. Excellent. And all do in different colors and in different frequencies. It's beautiful. It's almost, almost like a display going on. Is it possible for me to come closer to you? Uh, yeah, my, my next neighbor has said I can change place. Oh, very good. I'd like us to have a, a conversation. Yeah. Yeah, you're next to me now. Oh, very Sh good. Shanda is with me on the other side, so she, she's saying, I, I, I'm, you know, I'm your healer, so I have to keep on working on you, but you will not be disturbed. Oh, very good. And Shanda, thank you so much. Shanda, thank you so much. You're welcome, she said. And I'd just like you to ask myself, um, what year is this, please? Well, 2046, 2046. And <clears throat> had I already, uh, when did, what, what year, if you can just say, what year or uh, around what year did the actual shift take place? In the fall it took place 2021. But it had started much earlier and uh, going on in steps because there was many dragging behind that was meant to go with us. So it took some time to convince people to get get rid of their fears. And, and after 2021, did you as Lars stay physically manifest on the planet? I did, did for a while. And then, and are you there in uh, 2046, or had you already uh, decided to move on to somewhere else? I'm off to somewhere else, yes, but I'm here in a 
uh, spirit of porn, not in a body form. Oh, very good. And I know you don't want to know when that happens, do you? I already know. Okay, very good. And when did uh, Hank, how was he there? How long did he stay after the shift? You, as an earthbound entity, are still in 2046, still Hank. A little bit older, a little bit wiser, but you're going, coming and going in different dimensions because you have so easily to leave your body, go out of your body and travel, travel. You have done, done that for a long time now. You don't want to drag your body with you. you. You leave it and then you come back to it again. So uh, what do I look like? What is my, is, uh, I was told before my uh, hair was long and white and in a ponytail. You have, uh, yeah, you have white hair, but it's not that long. I, I can't turn around. I don't see a ponytail. Maybe you have done some haircuts or something. Tell me to turn around. Let me see your hair. Yeah, I did that. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. No, it's it's long. It's almost down to your shoulder, but it's I see no ponytail. So maybe you didn't do that today. Understood. Understood. Yeah. But it's really nice. It's framed your your face so nice. Very good. So it's twenty forty six, and this council or this group of uh, entities that are here. What is the name of this organization? It's just a society put together to uh, decide how to manifest different technology into the real reality of the fifth, the fifth dimension. Because that has taken, that has been done for many years, but we always have to balance it when it's ready to come in and to be used in the right way. It's very important. Very good. Discuss. When people decide to incarnate into physicality, especially on the earth, either third dimensionally or fifth dimensionally, I understand that, you know, it's a, a choice and they uh, set up um, particular things that they'd like to accomplish, but in the decision making, are there other councils and people who come together to help with the decision of each individual? Or how does that play out, please? If I think yes, I that know. Yes, taking place in a, in a different way now. Because now, this year, 2046, you cannot longer uh, reincarnate into a third dimension. Uh, not in this reality, not on this planet. So you come into this fifth dimension uh, reality and and you come in with a different purpose now that are more uh, onto the collective you don't longer need to do a personal journey in that dimension in this dimension of fifth dimension did you say a, so, um, I apologize did you say a virtual journey a journey no a personal Oh, personal. Understood. Very you good. You don't have to come into a density that you are getting more experience and uh, live over things that you needed to know because you have access to all of that knowledge now. Understood. So, so it's more you decide to come in and do a journey with all of these new happenings and realities that's going on now to be a part of that for the best of the collective so it's a little bit different but when you were back in the third dimension where you did a personal journey a little more and that now understood and how many people um how many people actually made it who still have physical bodies on the planet at that time there in 2046 how many who were here before uh, 2021, when the shift actually uh, occurred, uh, the mass shift, how many are still manifest on the planet from that time? With me that being... is almost still 
a little bit over 80% decided to do the shift then. So, but it's not all taking place 2021. It's, it will go on for 2016, 17, 18, and so on in, in shifts. But uh, almost 75% decided to go with us. Uh, the others, some decided to go further to another reality, another dimension, and doing other work. And some were not ready to shift, so they were helped to uh, to get some healing, because they were, excuse the expression, they were fucked up no. by the system and their environment they were living in, so they, they needed help. And many of them coming here now from that place, but they also decide to go elsewhere in the universe because they are, we are needed everywhere and going to be so forever. So there is nothing that is perfect in any linear time or it's always uh, an opportunity to develop. Oh. But we are closer and closer to the source energy and that connection and that's getting firmer and firmer and firmer. But we are not ever, ever fully learned or fully... Uh, we, we cannot fully express the total of our soul purpose because then it would be no meaning for you to exist anymore as a soul either. Understood. And this is, you're getting this information from Hank, correct? Hank, yes. And, okay. and the others filling in with sending uh, images and words oh. into my head also. They, okay. They participate in this. That's okay. Very good. The reason why I'm asking was uh, uh, several times, well, uh, two times I've been told that after the shift happened that I went directly to the seventh dimension. I guess that I left my body and decided not to, you know what I mean? So I was just curious. Yeah, that was exactly what you was. You were curious. You still did. You still wanted to stay after the shift that happened because you see that so much wonderful thing is happening to the humanity. So you wanted to be a part of that. So you stay here but you have the ability to travel wherever you want. So you are on and off all the time. And sometimes we're going together, doing uh, work together, and sometimes we have different uh, paths and uh, agendas. Excellent. And so, so say for instance, now we have a fifth dimensional earth. So other entities that weren't physically incarnated on the earth before the actual shift when they come, they can come and visit, but they're sort of coming in a holographic form where they can just be seen and heard and have communications with, but they're not able to actually condense their energy into mass to form a body to actually do things, physical things. M many of our sisters and brothers are able to come into this fifth dimension in a fully manifested form. So they are showing up because we are not longer afraid of them because we know what the purpose and then uh, intent, intention is for us so that fear is long long gone now not lingering here anymore and how easy is it to be a higher vibrational entity uh to lower your vibration to 5d to have a physical form is that commonplace depends on where you soul originated from from the beginning and if you came from a, a higher frequency from the beginning so to speak because there is no beginning and there is no end but absolutely you, if you come in from the 15 16 17 18 dimension it's e really easy for you to transcend or descend descend to a lower, yeah descend to a lower frequency uh, but it's not always that easy if you're vibrating very high to manifest physically to be able to touch or uh, have this interaction with you are still a form of not a holograph but you're not fully manifested you're, you're more in an energetic form but we can 
the fifth dimension people can see you and interact with you. And more than likely, when they lower their vibration to have this type of interaction, they can come and go, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They can be off in a second. Oh, uh, very good. And now that... Um, and you do that also many times. You know, oh. Push. I'm off, and then you go. And, and so, which, I, which is amazing. And so now um, is... Um, Oh my God! You threw me off when you said I did that. <laughs> so you said yeah, and you're, so you're still a very, you're still a very wanted teacher from many different realms, from many different areas in the universe. You are, you're a appreciated teacher, and you're also an appreciated practitioner in different healing techniques. You're still doing that. And they want to, they invite you. They, they send, not an email, but I can say email to you. Can you come over here to the eighth dimension? We have a planet here that needs some healing, and you will. Oh, yeah. Ah, oh, very good. And so, after, now that, the, after the shift, those who have passed on before uh, the actual shift, say such as our grandmothers and and uh, ancestors or whatever have you, those who are now now higher vibrational entities, they can uh, and if their vibration is of the proper vibration, they can now actually uh, can they now manifest on fifth dimensional earth to just communicate and you know to have fellowship as opposed to like really making bodies or something like that but is that possible now to have access to those who have passed on it's it depends a little about where they've gone off in the afterlife so to say because they can be in different uh, frequencies in different uh, areas so for some of them it's easy to manifest, yes, they can do have, have a physical interaction again. You can hug your old friends. But some of them have gone off in another direction, uh, depending on what interested and developed during this afterlife time. Uh, if we, we can express it like that. We do that because it's easy for you to understand that. Uh, when you pass over, you're first healing a little bit and then you're developing interest area as you did on the planet when you were manifest your interest in music, science or whatever and, and to do this different area you have to travel to many different dimensions and if you are in a higher frequency in the afterlife it's harder for you to manifest into the fifth dimension but it's possible yes. Oh very good. Very, very good. Uh, uh, amazing information. And uh, 2046 is uh, pretty uh, deep into uh, the shift. What type of, uh, well, I already, uh, the technology. Um, it's amazing what's going on. It's amazing. <laughs> and some of them sitting here now nodding because they were the ones that brought it into our reality in fifth dimension. And they are a little bit smug, but rightly so. Oh, excellent! And I'm really, in, I'm really um, uh, sort of stoked that the date of the fall of 2021 is when the actual major part of the shift. And of course, there were those who were shifting beforehand, but the, they didn't start up, start schools and that type of thing, really educating everyone else. Uh, to help with it and before this, the major transition happened? Yeah, and I did that together with the people that have passed on to an afterlife. Uh, because you met up and prepared this planet for the coming of the transition, for the masses to come into this reality. And you prepared that in many different ways, in many different areas, of course. Much of it went to healing and uh, helping Mother Gaia to uh, adjust to the new, new vibration and of course I can go into the technical aspect of that but I choose not to now. No, very good. That's good. We're, you can keep it simple as you can for us right now. Uh, 
Yes. No. But many of you do that together with your past loved ones because you connect back when you have passed over, when you transcend. And those of you that transcend earlier prepare this planet for the upcoming events. Oh, very good. And, and humanity, of course, not only the planet, the humanity and the, the infrastructure and all of that kind of thing. So we stepped in, many stepped into a made up table, you just sit down and have your spoon and eat. No, oh, incredible. Man, I, I, I'm, I'm sort of curious. I've asked this before, and I've asked it with like three different people or what have you. But uh, as far as the wars that were taking place on the planet, all of that is now history. Um, yes. When did all the wars just stop happening? When did the peace finally settle over the planet? The true peace. True peace take place 2021, 2022. There was still lingering a little bit fear. That uh, was the reason that they couldn't transcend into another reality, and that was the, the people, that entity that was taking off the timeline uh, to get help. Understood. 20, 2022, we can say the the peace is back on this planet again. Excellent. So the shift happens and then the vibration is just so high that it just dies down in a year. Yeah, you can't hold that. You can't hold enough anger or jealousy to have the feeling that you want to go into a war. It's not possible to hold that. If you all, all the time are overwhelmed with positive and loving energy. You can't even feel that feeling anymore, so it's not possible. Excellent. Most excellent. And then uh, it had, I'd heard in a, um, in a, um, it was just being discussed by someone who had passed on and they were uh, giving information about the shift, that as the, when the shift happens, that those who actually shift with the planet, when they're basically coming in to full consciousness, do they wake up into it the next day and or? Some of them do, but they need to adjust. So they get help from the already transcended entities to adjust to this vibration uh, because it is, uh, you can say it's, it's like you're getting a new job, you're getting a new reality in the way you're moving from one to another or buying a new house. You have to adjust for a while before it feels like home again. So they got a lot of help, many of them, but you have had no trouble to transcend into this. You're, you're feeling home in whatever frequency you're in. I was, uh, was there a mass exodus on the planet as this shift happened? Did a lot of people just happen to die that year because the vibration was just too high and they either hadn't chosen to go with the shift or... Was... You're going to notice that the birth rate is going down and uh, suddenly family that has eight, ten children just have one children in the future. And that's the way this is taking place. It's not that they are going to... Many of you, yes, decided to... It's time to step out of this because you know what's waiting for you. You not want to linger on anymore in that dimension and that density. Many die in a... But most of you die in a natural course. It's not in suddenly a high rate of accident or anything like that. That okay. would be horrible. So yes, many decide, now it's time for me to transcend, and they know how to, and they know where to. So yes, and uh, also this is taking place now, if you check out the, the effects of the birth rate, it's getting down. It's uh, lower and lower for every year now. I know, well I'm in Houston, well, Texas, and ours are, the, the obituary is large as the paper, as a normal everyday paper, each yes. Sunday. Yeah. 
That's very interesting. Well, in 2046, I'll be 82 years old. Uh, but I guess I won't feel like an 82-year-old, huh? Oh, you're looking good to be that old. Oh, very good. And what this... Um, okay. I have I have a big trouble to take my eyes off that cat woman. She's fucking you. <laughs> She's beaming. Oh, it's... Oh. I almost get teared out of here. Oh, wow. <laughs> Those type of thoughts don't hold anyone back from ascending, do they? Those are just no. natural, are natural. Yeah, that, that's just love and feelings, and that you're going to ascend with, you're not going to be a robot. Oh, okay. <laughs> that is a part of your soul, you know? Oh, no, right. yes, absolutely, absolutely. Well, there was a question that we had about the importance of balance, the importance of balance, especially right now during this transition. What is the importance of balance, balance during this transition between uh, 2016, that we're at the very end of the year, three months left, or actually November, December, and then the, uh, 2021? That is so very much important now, because that means that you need to reconnect to what is your uh, true purpose. And the balance is to try to balance the life you're living with your true purpose and get that in, sort that out and get that in order to be able to transcend as uh, smoothly as possible. So therefore we have many times told you that you have to connect back to your nature, you have to align yourself, you have to stop listening to fear mongler, you have to make up your mind in the way that you listen to your intuition and stop listening to all of that uh, imprints that's given to you from media or wherever it's coming from in your system. You have to step out of that reality and align with yourself. That is so important now. Hmm. You know, it's really interesting. Uh, you say I easily shift, and I know I'm doing a lot of work uh, on this planet as a, uh, and as even as my human self to try and help people to awaken and uh, to expand people's consciousness. Um, but I still like for not. I'm sorry. That is what we're doing now, isn't it? Yes. Well, you know, um, and obviously, if I if I shift easily, because I still like uh, pornography, is that a horrible thing? It's only no. horrible if I believe it to be horrible. Is that correct or what? It's not horrible if you it's aligned with whatever you do. It's okay. There is no judgment. If you like pornography, which I happen to know that the interest for that is uh, not that big anymore for you, not to make you disappointed, but that's just the way you are. So, but it's no no, no judgment, and that's okay as you as long as you hold the intention of not doing harm, it's totally okay. Understood. I just wanted to make that. Uh, uh to make that statement because I know that so many people are holding so much guilt about the incredible pleasures that one could have even if it's just a visual stimulation in physicality which I figured that's why it was created in the first place but to do no harm and to keep a balance you know to where it's not so yeah the guilt is coming out of that people are aware that people of use uh, outside their free will to perform things and that's giving you guilt and that should bring you guilt but if someone participating in this on, on free will there's nothing wrong with that at all understood okay my next inquiry was about light workers we use the term light worker because to me I call myself a renegade member of the family of light I am a bringer of the dawn here to bring in to usher in a new day and so the work that I do 
because I know light is information and that it ex when people have more light, they become enlightened. Now they have more understanding as opposed to being held in the dark. Um, it's so strange. Uh, people are always, I guess, looking for a reason to say to put a negative spin or connotation on something. The word light worker, how would you describe the word light worker? And do you think that my definition of light worker that I just gave is, uh, is uh, suffice or efficient? It's sufficient and it's a part of it, but it's a very big topic, this uh, thing of talking about light work, because we have all of us as different agendas. And, but we can say in a general explanation of this, that is the light work is that holding the energy of everything. they holding that energy within them and they cannot and that they, they are deliverance, deliverance of this energy to wherever it needed, in whatever form it needed, in whatever place it's needed. They are there to deliver this energy. And you are the holder of the energy, all of your lights, light workers and light beings. A little bit difference between light workers and light beings. But to explain it is, uh, simply, it's that you're holding energy and you're giving it where it needed to be. And that is a big task. And it can be heavy for many of you, but you are strong souls and knowledgeable souls. And you're, you're doing this out of the purpose of your soul. It's a part of your, your, it's a part of your soul to be that kind of life worker. Understood. And this energy that we're holding, uh, I can to me, just by your explanation, would be unconditional love because I believe unconditional love knows what it needs to do in all scenarios uh, and it's going to keep balance and also not uh, do any harm or perpetrate against anyone in any way. Only what's needed is how it's needed. That is the foundation of all, yes. Very but it's also a different kind of energy that you hold. It depends on what kind of work you took up on yourself in your contract to do. You're holding a one form of healing energy, one form of teaching energy, but it's all had the purpose in the or, or the foundation for all of this is bringing out unconditionally love. That is the source, unconditionally love. And that is the energy you're holding. And you have to understand that many of you light workers, and we acknowledge this and understand that many for you have a hard time to put up boundaries for yourself. And you are a little bit vulnerable in that case, but you have to, you have some time where, where you live now, where, where you sit now, to have boundaries because you are, can be victims for people that just wanted to have free access to the energy. And, uh, and their purpose is not for the higher or best. So it's just to fulfill their ego or their personal needs. And that is not meant to be with this energy. This energy is meant for the collective best or for the society best, not for the individual. It's going to benefit everyone, of course, but the foundation is to bring it out uh, in proportion to where it needs to be in different kind of work you're doing. Some of you doing healing, some of you, of you sharing art, some of you doing music, some of you... Yeah, it's many different forms. But the foundation is to bring out this love energy. I believe some people have the capacity to uh, present more energy than others, depending on their vibrational uh, capacity. And uh, yes. And so, if in fact one thinks that they're being used or whatever, you know, they have yet. But just to speak up, and I think being honest and being clear about it, you know what I mean, uh, is yeah. is very important as well. But because we want to acknowledge that it's sometimes where you are now in the third dimension, it's for you, there's so much judgment put upon 
you're human in that dimension and that of course you are a human so you are affected by it also but you have to understand that your purpose is not to fulfill any more tasks than what you took upon yourself to do when you manifested here your soul contract is what you need to fulfill with because that hold the foundation uh, energy of love uh, unconditional love people sometimes say there is not such thing as con unconditional love and in a way they are right because they can always be used in the wrong way that is what we mean about saying that it's important for you to to use your intuition with this your intuition is your communication with your soul that's the simple way to explain it it's your soul com communicate to your mental state and your body by talking to your intuition and if you listen to that you will be on the right path and nothing bad is going to happen to you ever but many many life workers and other people choose to not listen to that because there's many other influences 